going to call Human Services Finance and Policy back to order. Thank you for taking your evening for this committee hearing. We have one bill left on our agenda, House File 601. Representative Herr, welcome to the committee. Your bill is in front of the committee and will be laid over for possible inclusion. And it looks like you have an A1 amendment. Would you like us to adopt that or bring that amendment forward so you can get the bill in the shape before you discuss it? Yes, please, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Herr. I'll move the A1 amendment to House File 601. That's my motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed and the A1 is adopted. Okay, Representative Hur, to your bill as amended and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, Chair Schultz and committee members for hearing House File 601. I know my bill is the only one tonight, but I have a feeling it'll go quickly as it is a great bill and has already been heard in the Senate and has bipartisan support. House File 601 includes needed updates to our state's housing support program to promote stronger pathways to housing stability for individuals experiencing or at risk of homelessness across Minnesota. Housing support is a statewide program that helps cover basic housing costs like rent, food, bed and linen and laundry. It serves senior and adults with disabilities who have low incomes. More than half of recipients are people of color or American Indian. As I stated earlier, this is a bipartisan bill that helps individuals obtain stable housing in community settings. Focusing on those places where individuals have their own lease, it represents a unique public-private partnership with the ability to work directly with private market landlords. It includes two parts. Increases, increase the base rate funding to better meet current costs and make it more feasible uh, for more landlords and providers to participate. And now the second part is changing statute to allow for extended absences in specific situations so that residents can seek needed health care treatment without fear of losing their housing. These updates build on temporary changes made earlier in the pandemic response and would benefit residents at risk of homelessness as well as landlords as we move forward together to address our state housing crisis. Madam Chair, I do have testifiers here today to speak on behalf of the bill. The first is Ms. Alicia McNeil. If it's all right with you, I will yield my time to Ms. McNeil. Thank you, Representative Her. Ms. McNeil, welcome to the committee. Please state your name and affiliation for the record and then proceed with your testimony. Hello, I am Alicia McNeil. I am a program manager with Catholic Charities of St. Paul and Minneapolis. And I'm also a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. And please proceed with your testimony. Welcome. Great, thank you. Um, hello, Madam Chair and members. Um, as I said, my name is Alicia McNeil and currently working with Catholic Charities. Um, our program works with eligible housing support recipients to find and maintain affordable, stable housing with private market landlords. All 200 clients that my team currently supports in community-based rental units have disabling conditions and have experienced long-term homelessness. However, with the assistance of our program using housing support dollars, they all now have housing through individual leases with their landlords. Monthly house, housing support payments help tenants cover basic housing needs with rent to landlords and utilities first, but also common necessities like transportation, bed and linens, and cleaning supplies. Housing support has changed the lives of our clients in their journey of obtaining and maintaining housing stability. It is getting harder and harder though for our program to meet those needs. Housing support has not kept up with the cost of rent and the additional supports required and expected of this program. More often than not, we are looking at rents that are beyond the housing support base rate, not including utilities. This leaves our program with limited to no financial resources to provide clients with other necessities. Additionally, we are spending nearly as much time relocating existing clients to more affordable housing units as we are helping new clients moving into housing. Limits placed by housing support on resident absence is also problematic. Currently, a person cannot be gone more than 18 days at a time without losing their benefits. For individuals with chronic illness, mental illness, or substance use, 
it means that they have to choose between entering a needed treatment program and giving up their apartment key or not tending to their health needs. Our clients are being forced to choose between their health or their housing, but we know that housing is health care. Housing support is a unique pri public-private partnership that has worked to prevent homelessness and move people into stable housing, but the current rate is not sufficient anymore. The extra $100 a month provided by House File 601 would make it easier for more landlords to say yes when my team calls to ask them about a potential unit for a client. It would mean more tenants could stay in their current units and have a little extra to help cover those basic needs that so many of us take for granted, giving my team more time to help new clients by reducing the amount of moves that we do throughout the year. The change to the absence policy offered by the bill also means a person could get the healthcare treatment that they need and be able to return home after completing treatment instead of returning to homelessness. Through my experience as an alcohol and drug counselor, I have seen the difference one night of homelessness can have on an individual's sobriety. The impact of this policy change for clients needing treatment would be life changing. These are common sense updates that will support the longevity of housing support programs. These changes will allow programs to be able to meet the program expectations create more opportunity for program landlord partnerships and support housing stability for more Minnesotans. Please support House File 601 and the housing support program. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McNeil for that testimony. The second testifier I have is Gina Kotz. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name and affiliation and then proceed with your testimony. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Gina Coates. I am the Supportive Service Manager at the Clay County Housing and Redevelopment Authority um, that serves Clay County, which is the Moorhead area of northern Minnesota. Um, let's see. I um, Our housing supports program is a three-way partnership between Clay County Social Services, who administers the benefits, Clay County Housing and Redevelopment Authority, who holds the contract with Clay County Social Services and handles the room and board responsibilities, and 11 different supplemental service providers in the community. The supplemental service providers include homeless providers, community action agencies, mental health and substance use providers. There are currently over 150 participants scattered throughout the county, and they all have their own apartments with their own leases with private landlords. One of the reasons why this program is so successful in Clay County is that the housing is available in the price range that housing supports can maintain. However, rent and utility costs are increasing consistently every year. Utility costs in Clay County are insanely high. The costs associated with providing housing and related supplies is also very expensive. The program administration is very burdensome. One of the burdensome aspects of this program is that a participant can only be away from their unit for up to 18 days without losing their housing supports benefit. This policy often discourages a person from seeking inpatient mental health or substance use treatment. Also, there has been many times when after an illness or an injury, participants may need a higher level of care or rehab that they cannot get into their own homes. In both cases, the person may lose their housing while trying to seek the services that they need to stay healthy and housed. A good example of this um, for me happened in November of 2020. One of our participants fell on the ice and ended up needing intensive medical care and rehab. He was in the hospital for two weeks and unable to live independently for a month after his hospital discharge. Thankfully, there was COVID-19 waivers in place at the time and that allowed him to be away from his unit so he was able to focus on his rehab and not worry that he would be homeless when discharged. So I have some wonderful people that I serve and here's a couple stories. Sean was homeless for over 15 years. While homeless, he struggled with feeling of being worthless, lonely, and hopeless. When he moved in, the housing supports program was able to provide the necessary items so that he could eat, sleep, and bathe comfortably in his new home. He said this was the most welcome he had ever felt, and he was able to work with his mental health and able to uh, work on, on and off throughout the year that he was in the apartment. In January, something happened and he lost his apartment. However, during this terrible time, he states that he never gave up hope like he had in the past. In fact, he uses my new favorite phase, phrase, he actively practiced hope. He, he continued to work with a supplemental service provider and together they were able to find another apartment. 
Anthony became homeless for the first time at the age of 43, the day he walked out of jail after doing one year for his first and only felony. He had lost everything. He wanted to start a new life, but had difficult time finding a job and was staying in shelters on and off. Depression and anxiety set in and he started to drink heavily. That time, that became his life for the next 10 years. He states his pride got in the way for ever asking help. But then one day he did ask for help and he was able to move into Gateway Gardens using housing supports. It was a difficult at first for him because he is not used to being in a home environment for the last 10 years. But with the help of his housing case manager, food support, hygiene and cleaning supplies, he began to feel like a real person. He not, still struggles with alcohol from time to time, but he has made a lot of progress. He's currently looking for full-time job that will allow him to pay his way again and take care of his responsibilities. He now has a fresh um, start on life. So thank you for very much for hearing my testimony. I hope that the information I provided highlights why this bill is so important. If you have any questions about housing supports program, I would be happy to answer. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Coates. And it looks like we have a third testifier, Lorna Schmidt, that is here to answer questions. Representative Purr, any other comments before we open it up to questions from members? Uh, we are here and ready to answer any questions. Excellent. Chair Liebling. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, thank you, Representative Herr. I mean, this is a uh, a really important program that Minnesota does. And I believe we use only state dollars for this program because MA does not support housing. So this is something that I would say is probably special about living in Minnesota. I'm guessing that a lot of states don't do this at all. I don't know what they do without this program, but a couple of questions that I have. Um, one is about the absence days. So. Um, how hard is it, you know, say someone does, uh, you know, they become ill, they lose their benefit. How difficult is it to get back on the program when they get out of their other situation, when they get out of the hospital or the rehab or whatever? Is this a difficult program to apply for and get onto the program? would like to answer that question, either Ms. Coates, Ms. McNeil, or Ms. or Lorna Schmidt. I can if you'd like. Sure, go ahead, Ms. Coates. It's not necessarily the applying for the program again. It's whether the apartment will be there after we not be able to pay for the rent while they're gone. Okay, Fair Madam Chair. Well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So. Okay, well, that makes that makes sense. Um, yeah, okay, thank you for that clarification. And then the other question I have, and uh, just maybe the chair can kind of clarify for me, I assume we don't have a fiscal note on this yet, but we have one coming. We do not yet have a fiscal note. I don't know if Representative Her um, has an estimate of the cost for this appropriation. Representative um, Herr. Um, thank you, Chair Schultz and, um, and, and Representative Leveling. Appreciate the question. We do not have it. One has been requested. And at this time, I do not have an estimate. Um, the way that I do have some uh, numbers, but because the way this program works is it wraps up into a larger number, into a larger program, that it's kind of hard to parcel the numbers, which is why we're waiting for the fiscal note. I don't know if maybe one of my other testifiers, Ms. Lo uh, Ms. Um, uh, Lorna Schmidt can uh, add anything to that. Ms. Schmidt. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair and Representative. Thank you for the question. Um, yes, we are working with the department and partners right now to secure a fiscal note for this. Um, so we don't have an exact number, um, but what we can say is, you know, the larger numbers that have been um, discussed as part of housing support and, you know, the, the budget narratives that the governor's office and others have put out um, have looked often at housing support as a whole. Um, and this bill you know, really is focused on those community living settings that Representative Herr and our testifiers spoke to. So um, with this, we are looking at one very specific component of housing support and not the broader program or some of the other settings that um, people might be served in. All right, well, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Schmidt, Chair Liebling. Thank you, and thank you for that clarification. And you know, the reason I'm asking is because I'm aware that this could be very, very expensive. And so you're obviously aware of that and you've tried to 
tailor this to where the need is. So I appreciate that. And, you know, I, I hope it's something that we can do because I, I know this is a really important program. And as I said, it's a very special program. You know, in Minnesota, we, we do better than a lot of other places. And I think Minnesotans on the whole are very proud that we do. So thank you very much. Thank you, Chair Liebling. As soon as we have a fiscal note, we will send it out to committee members um, and it will be reflected if this is included in our omnibus bill. Any other questions for members? Representative Albright. Thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Herr. I wanna thank you uh, for bringing this bill forward. I'm a co-author on the bill. And, and the, the, the reasoning why I think this is so important, uh, important and I think Representative Liebling touched on it. Uh, by no fault of their own, if a person who is already disabled needs medical care or uh, has a comorbidity uh, and suffers from any number of myriad of, of issues, I don't think that we need to pile on any more penalty while they seek treatment. And as it has been said, uh, to know and be uh, comforted, or at least in the back of their mind, know that they can return to shelter after they uh, complete their treatment. Um, we, we are we are better uh, by serving those people in this capacity. And so I just wanna thank Representative Herr for uh, championing this cause. And I urge all members to support this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Albright. Any other questions from members? Okay, Representative Herr, any closing comments? Uh, Madam Chair, I just want to say thank you uh, to you and the committee for allowing me to present House File 601. This is a much needed change to a program that is crucial, as Representative Albright talked about, in keeping some of our most vulnerable community members in secure and stable housing. And so I just ask for your support and I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Herr, and thank you to our testifiers for joining us in the evening. We really appreciate it. So with that, members, I'm going to renew my I'm going to lay this bill over, House File 601, as amended to be um, included, possibly included in our um, Human Services Finance Omnibus Bill. So with that, members, we do have a committee hearing tomorrow, so I will see everyone at 1030. And with that, we stand adjourned. Thank you, members. Thank you.